order. Today, the committee will consider 33 bills as well as nominations in this committee's jurisdiction. One of the main thrusts this morning is executive session on artificial intelligence, and we have eight bipartisan bills on AI, and I want to thank Senators Young, Moran, Blackburn, Wicker, Thune, Klobuchar, Hickenlooper, Lujan, and Cinema. We have seen a continuous increase in AI from breakthrough neural network advances in algorithms and growing computing power. I'm proud that the Pacific Northwest and its research institutions, like the Allen Institute, have been key leaders in this particular area. In the United States, AI may increase annual GDP growth by $1.2 trillion to $3.8 trillion per decade, or even more. But China and other countries are investing hundreds of billions of dollars and taking action to gain economic and national security advantage from AI. The United States, the private sector, leads the way on this technology. Congress should build good, strong public-private partnership collaboration to drive innovation even further. As policymakers, we must make sure that emerging technologies work as intended and reliable in order to scale up this deployment. One of the bills on this morning's agenda, the Future of AI Innovation Act, builds on legislation that my colleague Senator Young and I originally introduced in 2020 and was passed into law. This Future of AI Innovation Act for 2024 builds on that continued support for competitiveness in the United States. It does not include any new requirement on companies, but it does create a new federal cooperation aimed at helping more public-private collaboration. The AI Safety Institute is a specialized unit within NIST. It develops voluntary guidelines, rigorous tests for advanced AI models, and measurement science to ensure reliability. It convenes leading private sector and government experts to promote the development of voluntary standards. We need to keep going and not seed ground to foreign adversaries. The United Kingdom, Japan, Canada, Singapore, uh, Kenya, European Union have all established similar safety institutes on these issues. And the United States, I believe, should lead on reliability and transparency. Targeting federal, targeting the help here is essential also for safety. I would like to uh, enter into the record, ask unanimous consent, a letter by Americans for Responsible Innovation, more than 40 companies and organizations calling for the authorization of the AI Safety Institute. Objection. The Thune-Klobuchar Artificial Intelligence Research and Innovation Act, also on the agenda, establishes a framework to promote greater structural transparency and risk management in the development of the highest AI impact implications. This is important provisions that will help identify major risk factors related to critical infrastructure. This is critically important. It also establishes a process for coming up with standards for provenance. While the U.S. government must support and deploy the reliability in AI, there is also a massive need for STEM talent, and virtually every future job will involve AI. So I certainly appreciate the Thune-Klobuchar legislation on this matter. There's also the need for additional test beds at our national laboratories, AI models to create materials for advanced manufacturing, and to make new scientific discoveries to benefit the U.S. In addition, the Warner-Blackburn bill is promoting leadership in these standards and increasing public sector participation in that NIST process and appreciate their contribution. The Hickenlooper Capito Validation and Evaluation of Trustworthy Artificial Intelligence Act which direct NIST to develop voluntary specifications and guidelines and assurances for AI. The Lujan Thune Test AI Act, which would formally authorize a NIST DOE pilot program on AI test beds. The Young Shots Artificial Intelligence Public Awareness and Education Act, which would establish a public awareness campaign about the benefits and risks of AI. The Cantwell Moran National Science Foundation Artificial Intelligence uh, Education Act to help NIST award undergraduate and graduate scholarships in AI and quantum hybrid computing. 
because the centers of AI excellence at our community colleges and important issues need a trained and skilled AI education workforce. And the Cantwell Moran Small Business AI Training Act expands access to training for small businesses so they can use AI to access capital and small business and achieving new export and government contracts. I also would like to enter into the record uh, a letter uh, that is supportive uh, of this legislation from Intuit. The last uh, of these bills, the Heinrich Young Creative AI Act, would authorize the National Science Foundation and AI research to, broad, uh, to broaden US research access to computational data and software and other resources to fully participate on research and development. Under these bills, developers and deployers of AI and the federal government and agencies, schools, and universities must apply with existing requirements. I urge the committee to act on these bills and to bolster the competitiveness of our public-private sector partnership for decades to come. There are numerous other bills on the markup today, and I want to thank uh, our colleagues for that. I'll have more to say about those uh, legislation, those pieces of legislation as we move through the process and at the end of the hearing. I'll now turn it over to my colleague, the ranking member, Senator Cruz. Thank you, Madam Chair. Earlier this month, at the committee's hearing on artificial intelligence and privacy, I described two roads diverging ahead of our nation. Down one path, the European model of government technocrats micromanaging AI businesses and industry. Down the other, entrepreneurial freedom and technological innovation. At the dawn of the tech age and at the inception of the internet, the United States chose the road less traveled, and that has made all the difference. It enabled the tech boom that led to America's economy eclipsing the EU's by nearly 50% within just three decades. This success and prosperity owes itself to entrepreneurs, their willingness to take risks to try to change the world. Essential to their success has been an American government that recognized the individual's freedom to innovate and to take those risks. At the hearing, I warned of this administration's executive actions, led then by Vice President Kamala Harris, and legislative proposals on AI that risk deviating from that historically proven path. Sadly, at today's markup, the committee fulfills that prophecy as it takes the first steps following the Europeans to heavy-handed AI regulation. Private individuals develop this amazing product, all without the government's help. Today, we hear, without a trace of irony, that American AI can only be successful now with the government's help. I think it's worth reflecting on how we got to this point. Some very wealthy and very well-connected AI entrepreneurs and their corporate allies hype up AI inventions as uniquely powerful and dangerous. Of course, these existential dangers are all theoretical. We've never actually seen such damage from AI. Nevertheless, these companies say they need to be saved from themselves by the government because their products are so unsafe. Next, these companies systematically place former employees inside the government, both the executive branch and the Congress, to write frameworks and bills about how to quote unquote responsibly use their products. Then these companies dutifully applaud the government and the lawmakers for creating a new bureaucracy that will stop these powerful risky tools from spreading disinformation, promoting bias, accelerating climate change, and even the entire annihilation of the human race. Big tech and big government get together to protect us rubes who can't be trusted. In reality, what is happening here is a tale as old as time. Regulatory capture. The biggest impact of overly broad AI regulation 
predicated on absurd exaggeration that would make Arthur C. Clarke and Isaac Asimov laugh will be the riches bestowed on the consultant and contractor class. Congress will have unwittingly, or more to the point, wittingly, protected giant, powerful, incumbent companies from competition while simultaneously driving real innovation across the Pacific to China. China right now is actively working to get ahead of the United States through any means necessary in the race to develop AI and other critical emerging technologies. Just this week, the New York Times showcased how open source AI is being used in China to catch up to the US. China also influences international standard setting organizations to get ahead, a problem that Senators Warner and Blackburn seek to address through a sensible bill that we will consider today, the Promoting U.S. Leadership and Standards Act. But China is just as happy to sit back and let the U.S. Congress do the work of handicapping the American AI industry for it. To avoid the U.S. losing this race with China before it has even hardly begun, Congress should ensure that AI legislation is incremental and targeted. There are likely some risks with AI that we can guard against now, such as cybersecurity vulnerabilities or a problem targeted by a bill introduced by Senator Klobuchar and myself called the Take It Down Act. Our bill targets bad actors who use AI to create and publish fake, lifelike, explicit images of real people. The Take It Down Act, which has a bipartisan group of 16 co-sponsors, would also require big tech to follow a notice and takedown process so that ordinary Americans who are victimized by these disturbing and non-consensual images can get them offline immediately. This bill is a tailored solution to a real problem, unlike many of the other AI-related bills on today's markup. The committee will consider several other important bills today as well. One such bill is my Illegal Red Snapper Enforcement Act, co-sponsored by Senators Tuberville and Britt. The bill would address a problem Gulf state fishermen face, cartel-backed Mexican gangs poaching lucrative red snapper in American waters, and then exporting their illegal catch to unwitting U.S. consumers. Our bill would require the development of new testing methods for law enforcement to identify and crack down on poached red snapper. This sensible legislation will help protect the livelihoods of law-abiding Texas fishermen. Turning to Chair Cantwell's National Landslide Preparedness Reauthorization Act, I would like to thank the chair for incorporating my amendments to improve water observing systems at the U.S. Geological Survey. Texans and others across the country rely on water observation from USGS to protect communities from flood and drought, both of which lead to slope destabilization and landslides. Even now, communities and farmers in South Texas are facing a devastating drought. The stream flow information my amendment requires will help predict and prepare for both droughts and landslides. I very much hope that we will have another markup when we return from August recess because there's a lot more work to be done. While I was pleased to see the Senate just approve Senator Blackburn's Kids Online Safety Act, a major step forward, we still need to go further. Many states have begun blocking children from accessing social media, especially at school. Senator Schatz and I have a simple common sense bill called the Kids Off Social Media Act that parents are demanding and that demands consideration by this committee, bipartisan support, and passage into law. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll now turn to Senator Klobuchar. Oh, wait. Nope. Well, yeah. Turn to her for motion. Okay. I move that S4178, the Future of Artificial Intelligence Innovation Act of 2024, as amended by the Cantwell Young Substitute, as modified by Bud 1, 
Bud two. Bud two as modified. Bud three, cruise four, cruise five, shots three, shots four as modified, shots six, and young one be favorably reported. Is there a second? Order. Any discussion? Yep. Did you want Madam to? Madam Chair. Yes. Do you want to roll call on this? Uh, I, want, I want to call for a minute. Uh, Madam Chair, I would call up Cruise One. Is there any discussion? Would you give us the bill number again, please? 4178. Go ahead, Senator Cruz. Madam Chair, I call up Cruz 1, the no environmental assessments in AI to the Cantwell substitute. When President Biden announced his massive 110 plus AI executive order last year, he called on the federal government to mobilize on regulating AI. And arguably at the center of Biden's plan was the National Institute of Technologies, NIST, being charged with guiding all other federal agencies and private industry in developing standards by which to regulate AI. When NIST released their latest AI risk management framework for generative AI this year, the harms and, and quote unquote risks listed were extraordinary. Quote, misinformation, quote, environmental impacts, and quote, amplification and exacerbation of historical, societal, and systemic biases. This bill takes the authorities and directions that Biden gave to NIST and codifies a radical AI safety institute run by White House political officials and members of big tech and gives it the authority to make this, quote, risk management framework the standard for regulating AI. And there should be little doubt that environmental impact assessments would be required for developers and deployers of AI. They'll be audited on it, required to certify it, and regulated by international climate agreements. If agencies adopt this risk management framework, all AI products will be subject to an environmental impact assessments. It's not hard to imagine any use of AI being subjected to NEPA. We're in a race against China to develop AI, and the administration and radical activists want to slow down AI development and drive up the cost of innovation. If we want to lose the race with China, setting up environmental impact assessments for every single innovation is a really certain way to surrender to China and give up US leadership. We cannot allow that to happen, and so this amendment is straightforward. It prohibits environmental impact assessments or climate change analyses from being forcefully applied to AI decision-making or development. Uh, speaking against the amendment, my, my colleague, I think, hopes that the government doesn't overreach here. But in reality, it is exactly what has helped us grow the innovation economy. When you think about what we came together on in the internet in setting standards that allowed various language models to propel us into the internet we know today, government standard setting done in collaboration with the private sector is the main reason why we lead in innovation today. In fact, approximately 93% of global trade is affected by standards and these regulations and impacts trillions of dollars. So what we're doing here today is trying to create a fair, safe, and competitive business environment. And as I introduced in a letter, it's pretty hard to get public knowledge and palantir on the same letter, but yet they do agree, as does other research institutions. So I'd ask my colleagues to turn down this amendment. I'd ask for a roll call vote. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Klobuchar? No. Mr. Schatz? No. Mr. Markey? No by proxy? 
Mr. Peters? No. Ms. Baldwin? No. Ms. Duckworth? No. Mr. Tester? No. Ms. Cinema? No. Ms. Rosen? No. Mr. Lujan? No. no by proxy. Mr. Hickenlooper? No by proxy. Mr. Warnock? No. Mr. Welch? No. Mr. Cruz? Aye. Mr. Thune? Aye by proxy. Mr. Wicker? Aye. Mrs. Fisher? Aye. Mr. Moran? Aye. Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mrs. Blackburn? Uh, aye by proxy. Mr. Young? Aye. Mr. Budd? Aye. Mr. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Vance? Yep. Next. Mrs. Capito. Aye. Ms. Lummis. Yes, sir. Mr. Thune. Yes. Mr. Vance. He's not here. We don't have a proxy. Clerk will announce the result. Ms. Cantwell. No. The no's are 14, the yeses are 12. It is not agreed to. Senator uh, Cruz, did you want to offer something else? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Um, I call up Cruz 3. Uh, Cruz 3 is designed to get rid of the Biden executive order on artificial intelligence. As I discussed in my opening mar remarks, there really is a choice of how to regulate. And, and, and in fact, I'm going to do something I don't often do, which is sing the praises of a Democrat president. Bill Clinton, during the Clinton administration, put in place an executive order that memorialized a very light touch on innovation with the growth of the internet. And it worked incredibly well. At the time, the United States economy and the EU's economy were almost exactly the same size. Because of the light touch on regulation, we saw incredible innovation in the United States, and in just three decades, we are now 50% larger, our economy, than the EU's. Unfortunately, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris learned no lessons from that success. Instead, they looked at how the Europeans approached the internet and said, that was a dismal failure, let's do the exact same thing here in the United States, and let's hurt American jobs and innovation, just like the nanny state regulators in the EU have done in Europe. This executive order, if there is a new president, will be rescinded, I believe, on the first day of a Trump presidency. I would note that the Republican Party platform that was just adopted in Milwaukee explicitly calls for repealing or rescinding the Biden executive order designed to shackle the development of AI. And so, I would urge the adoption of the amendment that rescinds that executive order. For my colleagues' information, the other than this amendment, the executive order is not in any of the legislation before us today. So I understand the interest in somehow trying to debate the president on this issue. But the opportunity before us today is the collaboration by this body to continue on what we did in 2020 to push forward the administration to even think about AI that then became the NIOC and the discussion that we've had today on how to move forward as a government. I hope the administration is asking every agency to continue to work quickly and collaboratively to understand the risks and the threats to AI. I do think my colleague mentioned he wasn't sure that we were actually seeing these threats today, but we are seeing threats from AI today. We have people who are using your own personal information against you to raise prices, whether it's in an automobile sector looking at your insurance rates or uh, Uber who basically decided if your battery was low they were going to charge you a higher rate or numerous other policies. So yes, I want the administration to move quickly and aggressively. So I would say that 
an administration that is pushing people to think about that critical infrastructure, work collaboratively across Homeland Security and many agencies. And I would say from my own personal interests, I want a faster response on weather. AI, every particle in a storm, is an algorithm. Every opportunity to now advance in fire season, in hurricane season, tornado season, more information, and getting the government to work quickly together to get us accurate forecast information so we can respond is critical. So I'd ask my colleagues to turn down this amendment. Yes, clerk will call the roll. Ms. Klobuchar? No. Mr. Schatz? No. Mr. Markey? No, by proxy. Mr. Peters? No. Ms. Baldwin? No. Ms. Duckworth? No. Mr. Tester? No. Ms. Cinema? No. Ms. Rosen? No. Mr. Lujan? No, by proxy. No, by proxy. Mr. Hickenlooper? No, by proxy. Mr. Warnock? No. Mr. Welch? No. Mr. Cruz? Aye. Mr. Thune? Aye. Mr. Wicker? Aye. Mrs. Fisher? Aye. Mr. Moran? Aye. Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mrs. Blackburn? I don't, I don't understand what that means. Mr. Young? Aye. Mr. Budd? It's, 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 Mr. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Vance? Mrs. Capito? Ms. Lummis? Ms. Cantwell? No. The no's are 14, the yeses are 12. Madam Chair, I would the, not. The, the, the amendment is Sorry. not agreed Sorry. to. It was Senator Cruz. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd now like to call up Cruz 10, uh, the no international agreements without congressional approval. On October 30th of last year, the Biden administration announced a massive 110-page AI executive order, one of the largest executive orders in history, and called on the entire federal government to mobilize on regulating AI, not just through our own government, but through international agreements. He directed the Commerce Secretary to coordinate with international allies to develop and adopt AI standards, to share resources for AI safety, and to develop common regulatory principles. The very next day, Vice President Kamala Harris flew to the Global AI Safety Summit in the United Kingdom and announced that she was establishing a U.S. AI Safety Institute at the Commerce Department to build upon Biden's EO and coordinate AI standards with other international AI safety institutes like the UK's. This year, the Commerce Department announced that it had entered into a non-binding agreement with the UK AI Safety Institute with almost zero public details of what was in that agreement. This bill expands this authority at our federal agencies and directs the Secretary of Energy and NIST to develop international AI standards to form alliances and coalitions and to coordinate regulations with international institutions. If Washington bureaucrats are going to backdoor the EU's regulations or tech policy into our federal agencies and the guidance they issue, at the very minimum, we should know about it and know what the hell they're doing. This amendment addresses this issue by prohibiting federal agencies from entering into these international agreements without notifying Congress. Now, based on the last couple of amendments, I assume we're going to see a party line vote of Democrats voting no. And I would just underscore, if you are voting no, you are voting for Congress to give away our authority and not even to know what is happening, but rather to empower bureaucrats to team up with foreign bureaucrats to destroy jobs in America. I would urge the adoption of my amendment. I think this amendment is... Uh a longer conversation about an actual treaty or agreement, but this is non-binding agreements that do not require approval. This is about whether the United States wants to try to advocate about policies that will help us win the day. In fact, I have called similar ideas a technology NATO. We should be evangelizing the best ideas about 
technology and AI, like no government back doors. We should be building a coalition with like-minded democracies and sophisticated technology countries like Japan or India and getting them to think on the same page as us. So I hope my colleagues will give the flexibility for us to continue to look at this. And if there is a major agreement, yes, I agree with you, Senator Cruz, it should come before. But let's not hinder right now the cooperation that will get the best ideas by Americans on the international stage. I'd ask the roll call. Madam Chair, if I could just give a quick clarification. What you just advocated for is exactly what this amendment does. This amendment does not prohibit international agreements. What it says, it's a very short amendment. It says if the head of a federal agency enters into any agreement, contract, or memorandum of understanding with respect to a policy relating to the oversight and regulation of artificial intelligence technology in the private sector with a foreign government, such agreement, contract, or memorandum of understanding shall not take in effect until such agreement, contract, or memorandum is submitted to Congress and a joint resolution of approval is adopted by both the House of Representatives and the Senate approving such agreement, contract, or memorandum of understanding. If, if, if the United States and Japan today can enter into a uh, MOU that basically says, let's study test bed technology on next generation composite materials so the United States doesn't lose the, lose the race in aerospace, and you want them to come up here to the United States Congress and get approval before they can get that agreement? I want competitiveness for our nation. I want products and services that are going to win the day. And if some Department of Commerce agency can go craft that deal with somebody, I want them to do that. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Klobuchar? No. Mr. Schatz? No. Mr. Markey? No by proxy. Mr. Peters? Ms. Baldwin? No. Ms. Duckworth? No. Mr. Tester? No. Ms. Cinema? No. Ms. Rosen? No. Mr. Lujan? No by, no by proxy. Mr. Hickenlooper? No by proxy. Mr. Warnock? No. Mr. Welch? No. Mr. Cruz? Aye. Mr. Thune? Aye. Mr. Wicker? Aye. Mrs. Fisher? Aye. Mr. Moran? Aye. Mr. Sullivan, Mrs. Blackburn, uh, I proxy. Mr. Young, no. Mr. Budd, Mr. Schmidt, Mr. Vance, Mrs. Capito, Ms. Lummis, Ms. Cantwell, no. The no's are 15, the yeses are 11. The motion's not agreed to. Any further discussion on this? If not, uh, I turn to Senator Klobuchar. Well, we should vote on the, my motion. I'm fine to do that. The motion. This bill? The pending motion. My pending motion yes. for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Amendment is agreed to. Um, Senator Cantwell, I have another motion. Senator Klobuchar. I move that S4394, the National Science Foundation Artificial Intelligence Education Act of 2024, as amended by the Cantwell-Moran substitute, Bud 1 and Bud 2, Cruz 4 as modified, and Peter Schmidt 1, be favorably reported. Is there a second? Is there a discussion? Senator Colbertron? This can be voice vote as well. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is agreed to. I now turn to Senator Klobuchar. I move that S. 2714, the Create AI Act of 2023, as modified by the Young Substitute and Cruz 6, be favorably reported. Is there a second? Second. They have one amendment, the Cruz 7 on data privacy. What? Can you see the 
So, Madam Chair, I have an amendment. Senator Cruz. Uh, Madam Chair, I, will, I want to call up Cruz 7, which is prohibiting taxpayer data in government AI research lab without their consent. Over the last year and a half, this committee has negotiated and pontificated about the importance of comprehensive data privacy bill to protect Americans' digital identity. Congress passed the TikTok ban to stop China from spying on Americans' phones, and another stop data brokers from transferring Americans' sensitive data to foreign adversaries. Yet, when it comes to the government, tracking, transferring, and buying Americans' data, there's absolute silence. Under the Create AI Act, the government is given the authority to have all federal agencies transfer taxpayer data into a massive repository that they then share with each other to study, to track, and to regulate our citizens, while also giving unknown access for whatever study the government chooses, all without any American's consent. This amendment is straightforward. It says the government cannot transfer any American taxpayer data to be used in this new AI laboratory, the NAIRR, for agencies to share or researchers to study without the prior written consent of the individual to whom the data belongs. It also says the government cannot go and purchase data from data brokers, which we know it does, and use that data broker information to circumvent obtaining the data holder's consent. The individuals protesting Israel's war against Hamas, never mind that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Speaking against the amendment, um, expanding the access of AI research will lead to innovative breakthroughs in medicine. And I look forward to the day that Senator Cruz joins myself and uh, Congresswoman McMorris Rogers in getting a real privacy bill that would prohibit the federal government and companies from selling your data without your authorization. But this is about allowing the NSF and NAIR partnering with the National Institute of Health on biomedical data sets so healthcare-focused AI research can be done. The Creative AI Act provides that the data must be something that is publicly available and has anonymized the data sets so that it does not put privacy at risk and consumers have already given their consent. This is an important issue, as my colleague has pointed out, but leaving us without this option right now would stifle the innovation that the very act is trying to enable. I ask my colleagues to oppose the amendment. Clerk will, did you want to vote? Yes. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Klobuchar? No. Mr. Schatz? No. Mr. Markey? No. Mr. Peters? No. Ms. Baldwin? No. Ms. Duckworth? No. Mr. Tester? No. Ms. Cinema? Ms. Rosen? Mr. Lujan? No, by proxy. Mr. Hickenlooper? No. Mr. Warnock? No. Mr. Welch? No. Mr. Cruz? Aye. Mr. Thune? Aye. Mr. Wicker? Aye. Mrs. Fisher? Aye. Mr. Moran? Aye. Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mrs. Blackburn? I by proxy. Mr. Young? No. Mr. Budd? Mr. Schmidt? Mr. Vance? Mrs. Capito? Aye. Ms. Lummis? Aye. Ms. Cantwell? No. The no's are 14, the yeses are 12. Motion not agreed to. Senator Klobuchar. Uh, Senator Cantwell, I move that S4769, the validation and evaluation for the trustworthy artificial. Well, we haven't done the other one yet. We're, we're still on. Oh, you want to vote on the want, underlying, yeah, uh, underlying. I'd like a roll call on the underlying bill. Underlying bill. Yeah. Roll call vote on the underlying bill. Amendment. My past motion. 4769. Nope. Sorry. It's the one before that. It is on. Um, 27, 14. A roll call has been requested on 2714. Thank you. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Klobuchar? Aye. Mr. Schatz? Aye. 
Mr. Markey. Aye. Mr. Peters. Aye. Ms. Baldwin. Aye. Ms. Duckworth. Aye. Mr. Tester. Aye. Ms. Cinema. Aye. Ms. Rosen. Aye. Mr. Lujan. Aye by proxy. Mr. Hickenlooper. Aye. Mr. Warnock. Aye. Mr. Welch. Aye. Mr. Cruz. No. Mr. Thune. Mr. Wicker. Mrs. Fisher. Mr. Moran. Aye. Mr. Sullivan. No. Mrs. Blackburn. Mr. Young. Aye. Mr. Budd. Mr. Schmidt. No. Mr. Vance. Mrs. Capito. Aye. Ms. Lummis. No. Ms. Cantwell. Aye. The ayes are 19, the noes are seven. The motion is agreed to. Senator Cantwell, I now move that S4769, the validation and evaluation for the Trustworthy Artificial Intelligence Act as amended by Cruise 1, Cruise 3, Cruise 4, Cruise 6, Hickenlooper 1, Hickenlooper 2, and Hickenlooper 3 be favorably reported. Is there a second? Second. Are the, is there discussion? Marky, are you going to do an amendment? Yep. Yeah. Madam Chair, I have an amendment. Marky, amendment number one. Call up the amendment. Senator Marky, would you like to call up the amendment? Yes, Madam Chair, I ask. Senator Marky. Amendment number one. Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, AI has a Dickensian quality. It's the best of technology and it's the worst of technologies simultaneously. It can enable, it can ennoble, it can make tremendous breakthroughs, but it can also degrade, it can also debase, it can also undermine other goals which our society needs to achieve. We'll write it down. And one of those issues that is not being addressed today is that while AI can help to meet environmental challenges, while it can help to ensure that we have more efficiently cool buildings, that it can help us to respond to natural disasters. But at the same time, we know that AI is going to ultimately demand a huge amount of our electricity, while also requiring significant quantities of water to actually cool the data centers that are being constructed all across our country. One recent report found that a chat GBT query requires nearly 10 times as much electricity as a Google search. 10 times as much electricity, chat GPT, as opposed to a Google search. So who says that this is going to be big? Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI. He said that we would need a, quote, energy breakthrough if we're going to feed AI's growing energy appetite. So my amendment takes a first step towards understanding how AI might change our energy usage. It would, one, direct NIST to convene a consortium to create standards to measure the energy and environmental impacts of artificial intelligence. Two, to create a voluntary impact reporting program for AI developers. And three, help us understand the effects of AI's energy and environmental impacts. So let me be clear, this amendment requires no regulations. It poses no requirements on companies. It is simply about measuring and understanding for our country's long-term environmental well-being 
what the benefits and costs of AI to our energy and environmental systems will be. As AI becomes more widely adopted, this transparency will be vital for maintaining a stable electricity grid and managing very scarce water supplies in our country. So this bill has broad support in both the AI and environmental communities, including endorsements from Salesforce, the AI company Hugging Face, the Green Software Foundation, and Sierra Club, amongst many, many others. The amendment represents a consensus position and a sensible next step just to understand the emerging issue of AI's energy and environmental impacts um, I urge my colleagues to vote aye, uh, and um, I, I would like to hear the discussion, uh, and I, I might be persuaded to withdraw it at this time, but I, I, I think it's an important discussion for us to have. We all know it's there. It's the elephant in the room, the environmental impact of AI on our society. So with that, Madam Chair, I, uh, uh, I yield back. Madam Chair. I can't see who's, oh, Senator Hickenlooper. Uh, thank you, and uh, I wanna make sure uh, that uh, we recognize that I, we agree that we have to be mindful of the harmful impact to our environment uh, from everywhere, and, and certainly including AI. Uh, I'm shuttling back and forth between the uh, uh, Energy and Natural Resources Committee where we're taking a step forward today uh, on a bipartisan package to improve permitting for various energy projects, uh, speeding up the review and uh, siting of transmission lines to transfer energy where it's needed as, as uh, the most, and make sure that our grid stays reliable and resilient, um, help address the needs of AI uh, and, and, and the needs of climate change. We are gonna need, have a lot more energy going in a lot different directions. I uh, certainly support the intent of Senator Markey with his amendment. But we can't support the amendment at this time. The, the bill requires a study led by the uh, EPA to examine the impacts of AI on the environment. While the, the AI Environmental Impacts Act has been referred to this committee, I think we need to build further consensus before we pass amendments for agencies outside Commerce Committee's jurisdiction at this moment. Uh, additionally, many of the bills we're considering today have been bipartisan, um, and we're con committed to working with Senator Markey on to help build a bipartisan consensus on the issues his AI Environmental Impacts Act focuses on. Uh, lastly, the Department of Energy, another agency outside our primary jurisdiction, <clears throat> is already looking at the impact of AI on our electric grid. And just yesterday, the Secretary of Energy's advisory board recommend, gave recommendations to Secretary Granholm, uh, A, to mitigate the potential impact from peak demand for energy driven by AI and, and data centers, uh, B, to task DOE's Industrial Efficiency De Decarbonization Office with benchmarking current data center energy use and establish that data. Uh, and then also establishing communication channels between the tech center and the power suppliers. Um, we certainly appreciate very much uh, Senator Markey for his leadership on such a broad range of issues and especially in including the environment. Uh, I hope we can uh, continue working going forward but uh, cannot support this amendment at this time, and certainly I encourage my- Would, this, would the Senator yield? Senator Markey. I yield. Okay, no, thank you, Madam Chair. In 2005, um, in the House, on the Energy and Commerce Committee, I made an amendment, a very simple amendment, as more and more Americans had their computer in their workspace at home or uh, at the office, I had a very simple amendment. And it was directing the computer industry to figure out a way for when Americans had their screensaver on overnight with the picture of their favorite things up there, that they just reduced the energy, the electricity consumption by 30%. Because they were like vampire devices just consuming electricity just to keep that screensaver up. So we had a debate just like this in the committee, and it passed. Now, the leadership then got some calls 
And in the Rules Committee in the House, they took my amendment out, even though I had one in committee, because everyone knew there was a problem. Because the industry can't have it both ways. They can't say, oh my god, look at AI. It can find the cure for cancer. And then when we turn and say, well, can you make the device more energy efficient? They go, oh, you don't know what you're asking. That's so complicated. Yeah. And so again, for year after year, more and more coal burning plants had to be constructed so we could have screen savers on overnight. And all of us right now, every night, we've got this device plugged in, that device plugged in, that device plugged in. That's the addition to our grid over the last 20 years. It's all those things being plugged in. And AI is just going to add to that problem. So if we're going to discuss this subject, we have to discuss that incredible impact it's going to have on our environment. Because all that oil or gas or coal that's going to be burnt, it's going to create more disease in our society. It's going to cause more storms that are going to hit state after state. So I realize I don't have the votes right now, but I will say that we can't avoid this issue. This industry just can't sit over here touting all the wonderful things that AI is going to do and not deal with the obvious, obvious side effects that it has. And by the way, they're building many of these facilities in very vulnerable areas. They're going to places that are very close to where those environmental sacrifice wards in cities all across the country have always been. So we have to deal with it. Because we know those fumes are going to be going up in those same neighborhoods to generate the electricity that then will be fueling the AI revolution. Okay? And one of the goals I know in your legislation is to further uh, NISC AI risk management framework. And I think if there's a risk, it is a risk of climate change. It's a risk of families being nearer these new um, permitted, uh, perhaps, natural gas facilities that are going to have environmental consequences. So I, I just wanted to raise the issue, let people know that we can't avoid it. It's coming. Uh, and it's going to be our responsibility. The bill is referred to our committee. So if it comes to our committee, we have a responsibility to talk about it. I know that we don't have the votes right now. And out of respect for the, the, the senator from Colorado, I will withdraw my amendment and ask unanimous consent, Madam Chair, to withdraw the amendment. But I want to work with you. I want to work with all the members of this committee. We just can't avoid that massive impact it's going to have upon us. So. Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Senator Sullivan. Madam Chair, just a quick comment. I think Senator Markey is raising an important issue. I don't always agree with him on energy issues, but when we're looking at AI and we're looking at cloud computing and we're looking at these things, it is important to recognize we're going to need a lot of energy in America if we're going to be the lead in these areas. And that's why, and many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, I would say more, more on the Republican side of the aisle, are for all of the above energy and not going to certain states like mine, like the Biden administration has done, and saying we're going to shut down all of Alaska's energy. Doesn't make any sense, and we're going to need energy for this. And so I think it's an important topic that we need to look at. America needs more energy. We should have all the above energy, not going after certain states Thank like you. mine, which has been the focus of a lot of shutdowns by the, the current administration. It, it, if the gentleman would yield. Senator. Senator Markey. Thank you. And I hope we can okay. and, move. And I, and I can wrap it up. Thank I can you. wrap it up. I can wrap it up. And, and it'll be, you know, just to say this, my mother would always say to me, Eddie, when I'm 10, 11, 12, very disappointed. She would say, Eddie, your father and I, we're going to donate your brain to Harvard Medical School as a completely unused human organ. You have to learn how to work smarter, not harder. Well, that's all I'm calling for here. Let's have the study. And then what are we going to call upon the industry to do to reduce their unnecessary electricity consumption? I don't want to hear them boasting about all the wonderful things they're going to do for our society and then say they can't themselves. Like, doctor, heal thyself. AI industry, heal thyself. How are you going to be more energy efficient? How are you going to get this done using your own technology that doesn't necessitate us ever having to build the plants in the first place? So this is not really about megawatts, it's about negawatts. It's 
about the negativity, the negative watts that never have to be built because we were smarter and not working harder. So I thank you, Madam Chair. And, and yes, I, ask I you look Madam forward to, to withdraw working. the amendment. With that, we'll look forward to working with you. Is there further discussion? Okay, thank you. Senator Cruz, do you want a roll call vote on this? Voice vote. Voice vote. Yeah, voice votes. All those in favor? I'd like a roll call vote on this. No. Is this the... No, Markey is withdrawn, and now oh. we're voting on final passage yeah, of 4769. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The motion is agreed to. I recognize Senator Klobuchar. I move that S3312, the Artificial Intelligence Research Innovation and Accountability Act of 2023, as amended by the Thune Klobuchar substitute, be favorably reported. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Madam Chair. Senator Cruz. Madam Chair, I call up Cruz 15, the no high impact AI system. This bill is the only AI bill being considered today that contemplates mandatory standards and certifications for certain AI systems, as well as robust enforcement from the Department of Justice. I have noted my longstanding concerns with the effects of heavy-handed regulations and what that means for U.S. technological competitiveness and innovation, particularly with respect to our competitive edge over China. It can also serve to benefit incumbent operators and entrench powerful giant companies with the resources to comply with these onerous standards. Currently, the bill has robust DOJ enforcement with respect to entities that deploy so-called, quote, high-impact AI systems that make decisions with respect to credit, employment, health care, et cetera. These are systems that are deployed by some of the most highly regulated entities now, like your local hospital, your bank, or your alma mater. I'm concerned with adding layer upon layer of new mandatory regulations for nascent technology. But I'm particularly concerned that if your bank, your town's college, or your hospital decides to use AI systems to improve outcomes for Americans, they will suddenly be swept into being regulated by the Department of Commerce on top of existing federal agencies, which already drives up the cost of essential services for the average American. Inflation is ravaging American families now, and we should not take steps to make it worse. Regulating these specific AI systems in the manner proposed in this bill could also give the tools to the Biden-Harris administration to pursue many of the nefarious AIEO and Bill of Rights policies that the radical left wishes to use to censor speech. I've offered a number of amendments today to try to narrow the scope of this bill and to protect nascent technology and to stop duplicative regulations and, with multi and multiple federal agency regulators. Unfortunately, the bill sponsors and I were not able to reach agreement today and find an appropriate scope for this bill, so I'm calling up Cruz 15. My amendment would limit the scope of the enforcement in this bill to only the critical high-impact AI systems, i.e. the critical infrastructure systems tied to our nation's security. I believe this is a better scope for the bill, especially given how nascent this industry is and how we ought to be cautious in adopting a command and control regulatory system that sets the United States back. And I urge my colleagues to support this amendment. Further discussion? Madam Chair, Senator Thune. thank you. I understand and support the ranking member's interest in minimizing the regulatory burden and providing room for AI development to flourish. Um, but I, I have to oppose uh, the amendment. And, and let me just say that the bill itself includes provisions which explicitly exclude deployers of these systems who are already subject to a similar regulation at other agencies, provisions that I have worked with the ranking member to improve. Uh, this provision is meant to provide some basic transparency with respect to the deployment of these systems while minimizing burden and preventing duplicative regulation of these industries. And even for deployers of systems who are not subject to regulation elsewhere, they are simply required to submit a transparency report to the Department of Commerce. This does not require, does not require deployers to hand over data 
or any sensitive information, only describe actions that they're taking to manage risk in the deployment of their systems. Importantly, this entire framework recognizes the body of existing law that already addresses many of the risks posed by AI, and I've taken significant steps to minimize regulatory burden and to maximize transparency. Uh, I'm committed to working with the ranking member to resolve his concerns going forward, but I would uh, urge uh, opposition to this amendment. And I would also point out that this bill is not at all, at all, informed by the Biden EO. In fact, it is a very pragmatic, fact-based, and risk-based alternative uh, to the EO, and which creates more certainty out there because these EOs come and go with every administration. And I think the EO is the wrong approach. I believe this is the right, light-touch approach that encourages, encourages innovation and at the same time provides a, a framework uh, to address some of the riskier applications of AI. I think it's the right touch. Madam Chair. Senator Klobuchar. I, I just wanted to reinforce what Senator Thune just said. This bill uh, was um, long in the making, and it has broad support on both sides of the aisle. It's narrowly tailored. I know that Senator Thune, as the lead on the bill, has worked with uh, Senator Cruz on other issues. We've worked with him on issues, um, and we will continue to do that. But this really creates some base regulation for non-defense applications of AI and is a very important bill, and I thank Senator Thune for his leadership on the bill. Further discussion? Uh, Madam Chair, one suggestion I'd have for my colleagues that, that uh, to consider perhaps when referring to the Biden AIEO as the AIEIO. Um, and, and with that, I'm happy to have a voice vote on this amendment. All those in favor of the Cruz Amendment say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. 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 A motion is not agreed to. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Senator Schmidt. I'd like to call up Schmidt Amendment 1. Uh, I think, hold on one second, Senator Schmidt. I think that's for a different bill. Is this on the Boone Klobuchar bill? It is. I wonder if it's. Senator Schmidt. Thank you, Madam Chair. Call up um, for a vote, Schmidt Amendment 1. This, um, this amendment um, would prohibit the FCC, who has no illegal authority at all, to impose controls on political speech. They're moving um, forward with that rule. Senators McConnell, Thune, Cruz, and myself wrote a letter on June 6th. To my bill. Recognizing this issue, this is a very dangerous road to go down, in my view. The First Amendment is not a partisan issue. Um, we should not be empowering an agency that has no legal authority at all uh, to censor political speech just in time uh, for the 2024 general election. Uh, members, this is, um, we had not expected this to come up. I thought we had had a discussion about this. Um, AI, as we know, has the potential to upend campaigns and elections unless there's some rules of the road. Uh, today, actually, I'm calling up uh, two bipartisan bills. One I have with Senator Hawley and Senator Collins and others on deepfakes. And then the second one is on labeling with Senator Murkowski. Um, this is like a hair on fire moment. And given that we've seen some opposition, um, they are bipartisan bills, and we hope we can work through it. We don't want to then take away the authority um, that the FCC has had for decades um, to require information about political ads on television and radio to be made public, like who bought an ad, how much they paid for it, when it ran. So I would argue to my colleagues, I'm happy to talk to them about this later, um, but th this is not the time or place to do this, and if anything, the last thing we want to do when we don't have any set rules in place on AI is to take away the authority of the FEC or the FCC to be able to continue to do their job. And I, I hope that our colleagues would uh, consider withdrawing this and we could discuss it at another time or we, we could have a vote if you would like. Madam Chair. Senator Schmidt. There had been, st there had been a conversation about doing uh, a study about this as long as there was a pause. Uh, there is no pause. 
And to the point, the FEC has come out and said that the FCC has no legal authority. So, you know, outside of the conversation about censoring political speech from a government agency, the fact of the matter is the FCC has zero legal authority to do any of this. So if we want to study it, I'm all for it, but they need to pause it. If they're not going to pause it, this is the opportunity to, in a bipartisan way, to stand up for the First Amendment together. Yes. I, I just think, again, it is the very last time we want to be setting a new precedent to limit the FCC's ability to regulate political broadcasting um, at this moment where we are seeing um, used against whether it was former President Trump during the primary in New Hampshire, an ad that had a fake uh, fake video of him hugging Dr. Fauci, or whether it was the fake robocall of President Biden's voice telling people not to vote, or whether it's the fake video of Elizabeth Warren that we saw. It's been going on on all sides. And the last thing that you want to do is to limit the FCC's ability or the FEC's ability right now as we try to put some rules of the road in place. Maybe there's something we could talk about if we weren't being blocked of putting AI rules in the place of Senator Hawley in my bill um, to ban these deep fakes except for parity and things that would be limited by the Constitution. Okay, Madam Chair, ask for a roll call vote. Thank you. Speaking uh, against the Schmidt Amendment, I think the FCC has made it clear it's been in the press that they are not going to affect what happens in this election. So the desire by you to try to affect this is an admirable one, but I think Senator Klobuchar's point is that what we need to see is action that people agree on by this body as opposed to something that might curtail the current authority of the FCC. I urge my colleagues not to support. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Klobuchar? No. Mr. Schatz? No. Mr. Markey? No. Mr. Peters? No by proxy. Ms. Baldwin? No. Ms. Duckworth? No. Mr. Tester? No. Ms. Cinema? No by proxy. Ms. Rosen? No by proxy. Mr. Lujan? No. Mr. Hickenlooper? No by proxy. Mr. Warnock? No. Mr. Welch? No. Mr. Cruz? Aye. Mr. Thune? Aye. Mr. Wicker? Aye. Mrs. Fisher? Aye. Mr. Moran? Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mrs. Blackburn? Aye by proxy. Mr. Young? Aye. Mr. Budd? Aye. Mr. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Vance? Mrs. Capito? Aye. Ms. Lummis? Aye by proxy. Ms. Cantwell? No. The no's are 14, the yeses are 12. Motion is not agreed to. Vote on the underline. So the motion um, is, a, is not agreed to. The, we're now voting on 33-12 and be reported favorably. And that's voice vote. Yep. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? The motion is agreed to. Senator Klobuchar. I move that S1008, uh, Setting Consumer Standards for Lithium-Ion Batteries Act, be favorably reported. Is there a second? Second. Is there discussion? Madam Chair. Senator Cruz. Madam Chair, I call up Cruz 1 on this. Uh, when acting within the authorities that Congress has given them, the CPSC fulfills an important mission to protect the American consumer. But lately, unfortunately, the CPSC has been operating outside of its authority, particularly with respect to its ridiculous escapade to try to ban gas stoves. This is unacceptable, and Congress should not reward that conduct by giving more authorities to this rogue agency. It is also true that there has been a rise in fires some causing fatalities and serious injuries due to rechargeable lithium ion batteries for devices such as e-bikes and electric scooters. This is particularly the case due to cheap, defected, defective imported products, often from China, that don't comply with the current voluntary manufacturing standards that are recommended by CPSC and commonly adopted by U.S. manufacturers. 
My amendment is a compromise to address the risk of fires while placing guardrails around the CPSC. My amendment proposes requiring the CPSC to adopt the current voluntary standards for batteries recommended by the CPSC and that have been adopted by the New York City Council. Yes, I'm asking for this committee to take the very same position that New York City took. By adopting these standards, Congress is speaking to the fire risk without giving the agency broad authority that can be abused. Especially in light of the Supreme Court's decision in Loper, Congress must begin to reclaim its legislative authority, so I urge my colleagues to support this amendment. My colleague is right that fires caused by poorly made batteries coming from China is an issue, but the CSPC needs every tool we can give it to make safety and protect consumers and help first responders a priority. The purpose of this amendment is really to limit the CSPC's ability by requiring the agency adopt voluntary standards. The House passed legislation, which is in this underlying bill 378 to 34, included the future APA rulemaking. So we should not let the fear mongering about an agency now hobble them from doing their true mission, which is safety, protecting consumers, and protecting responders. The House passed legislation is endorsed by firefighters, fire chief, building owners, and consumers report. I oppose the amendment. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Klobuchar? No. Mr. Schatz? No. Mr. Markey? No. Mr. Peters? No by proxy. Ms. Baldwin? No. Ms. Duckworth? No. Mr. Tester? No. Ms. Cinema? No. Ms. Rosen? No by, no by proxy. Mr. Lujan? No by proxy. Mr. Hickenlooper? No by proxy. Mr. Warnock? No by proxy. Mr. Welch? No. Mr. Cruz? Aye. Mr. Thune? Aye. Mr. Wicker? I love New York. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Fisher? Aye. No. Mr. Moran? Aye. Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mrs. Blackburn? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mr. Budd? I by proxy. Mr. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Vance? Mrs. Capito? Aye. Ms. Lummis? I by proxy. Ms. Cantwell? No. The no's are 14, the yeses are 12. Motion is not agreed to. So now we have a motion that the S1008 is ordered to be reported favorably. Can do that. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion is agreed to. I recognize Senator Klobuchar. Um, I move that S3348, Harmful Algal Bloom and Hypoxia Research and Control Amendments Act of 2023, as amended by the Sullivan Substitute, be favorably reported. Second. Is there discussion? Madam Chair. Senator Cruz. Uh, Madam Chair, I call up Cruz Amendment 11. This bill would authorize $8 million for the EPA to perform harmful algal bloom research, HAB. The EPA has never been authorized before for these funds. We need to be good stewards of our environment because we all need clean air and we all need clean water. However, this administration's EPA is more interested in stifling development, not actually taking care of the environment. The Biden-Harris administration EPA cares more about appeasing the left fringe environmental lobby than they do about American families, as can be seen in their national pollution standards for passenger cars. The EPA's regulations are setting up this country for a dangerous economic decline. Biden, Harris, and their officials care more about their radical climate agenda than they do about the welfare of the American people. The EPA has gone overboard by imposing massive burdensome rules on farms over the years. 
making it harder for people that put food on our tables to survive. The goal of the EPA is to impose irrational regulations on American families, making it more difficult for them to survive and prosper. Look at how the EPA and California are push pushing to ban gas-powered vehicles over the next decade. The rules the EPA continues to push on the American people will create a greater dependence on China-produced vehicles. This amendment removes a provision that provides additional funding to the Biden administration's out-of-control EPA, and I urge members to vote yes on this amendment. Madam Chair. Senator Schatz. Just very quickly, um, look, obviously Senator Cruz and I have a, a deep disagreement about climate policy and energy policy, but the idea that we're going to pull out money for a real problem, algal blooms are like, that's a real thing. It may be something that is easy to characterize as goofy, but that's a real thing. If you fish, if you hike, if you are ever in nature, you can see this in lakes and streams and coastal areas. Like, this is not the target that Senator Cruz thinks it is. If you want to attack the EPA, attack the EPA, but allowing the federal government to do pure research to try to solve an actual problem is not the way to do it. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Klobuchar? No. Mr. Schatz? No. Mr. Markey? No. Mr. Peters? No by proxy. Ms. Baldwin? Ms. Duckworth? No. Mr. Tester? No. Ms. Cinema? No by proxy. Ms. Rosen? No by proxy. Mr. Lujan? Mr. Hickenlooper? No by proxy. Mr. Warnock? No. Mr. Welch? No. Mr. Cruz? Aye. Mr. Thune? Aye. Mr. Wicker? Mrs. Fisher, Mr. Moran, Mr. Sullivan, Mrs. Blackburn, Mr. Young, Mr. Budd, I by proxy, Mr. Schmidt, Mr. Vance, Mrs. Capito, Ms. Lomas, I by proxy, Ms. Cantwell, no. The no's are 14, the yeses are 12. Motion is not agreed to. I think the now the vote is on S3348, be reported favorably. The voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion is agreed to. Madam Chair. Senator Wicker. Madam Chair, I move that S2238 as modified by the substitute including Sullivan 1, Thune 1, and Fisher 1, be favorably reported. Second.
Madam Chair. Senator Schmidt. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would call up um, Schmidt Amendment 1 to Cruz Amendment 3 as modified the amendments at the desk. We haven't seen the modified amendment, Senator Schmidt. I was wondering, Senator Schmidt, if you would, this bill has been a lot of members and a lot of different issues. We're trying to keep this out of a big proxy fight on so many of the spectrum issues, but we do support Senator Wicker's underlying bill and the consensus reached by members and we would like to move ahead. I would ask you if you would uh, withdraw your amendment in hopes that we could keep this focused on broadband and move it through the process. Well, Madam Chair, I'm actually confident we would have bipartisan support for this amendment. I'm sure the Senator, we all want to solve these problems, and certainly there is divergent opinion on this committee about how to solve them. Well, the part of the problem, Madam Chair, is we don't get amendment votes on the floor ever, unless they're sure to fail. And if we're not allowed to offer amendments that would sure to pass in committee, an individual member has very little recourse to advocate for things that actually have broad support. And so we've tried to work on this. This is a simple amendment that would, allow, that would fund the rip and replace that, again, was overwhelmingly supported by Republicans and Democrats to expand auction authority to pay for that, the three billion bucks. I don't view this as particularly controversial. Um. I would say that we had a hearing and a uh, subject on this in which members on your side literally brought up that this were things that we shouldn't be doing because this shouldn't be a bill about spending priorities. The Cantwell bill before the committee in a hearing. So I do think that we all want to solve these issues. And I would just ask the senator again if he would just hold and work with us on this. We will make sure that he gets a vote at a future time, either on the floor or in this committee. When? In like, September. Like. So, the, so. I mean, quite frankly. Okay, I will no, promise. I'm, I will, just saying, I'm just saying there's no vehicles. This is a vehicle. Yes, there, there, trust me, this, we've made great progress in the last month of having many people at DOD and Department of Commerce come to terms. But when you offer your amendment, then other people will want to offer ACP. And then we'll have other amendments. So we'll be on, we'll, we will be here for several more hours trying to decide these issues. Yeah, yeah. So I will promise you, sir, to have an, a vote on this when we return in September. In committee? Yes, or on the floor, either one. Well, we were blocked on amendments on spectrum bills previously. Well, because there is disagreement, we are trying to work them out. So for the comedy of what great work our colleagues have done today, I ask you if you will take that agreement for a vote in September. Um, listen, Madam Chair, you and I have a good working relationship. I really want to work with you. I don't, we've had so few markups. This is a bill that's moving. It fits, it has broad bipartisan support. I mean, what you're asking me to do is no, to I'm at, bet I'm on the come you. that there'll be no. something down the road for a markup that may not happen. And in, and in a floor process by Senator Schumer that totally doesn't allow amendments. So I, no, I I'm wanna... asking you to not have a, a broadband discussion that now would turn into a spectrum discussion that would then get lots of other amendments added and a promise that we will give you a chance, either on the floor or in this committee, to offer, if it isn't resolved by then, a vote. So this is about whether you want to work with people to have that opportunity. <laughs> I'm trying to do that. I really am. And, and we've gotten commitments from, from Democrats on this bill who support this amendment. We, we all support getting a spectrum policy. and we This all really isn't about spectrum policy. This is it, about rip and replace. It you know, is, Huawei. It is, it is about a broader policy, and it is about it is about other amendments that people want to offer when you turn Senator Wicker's bill that is a basic bill on broadband into a spectrum discussion. So I just would, I, I look forward to working with you on it, and I would just ask your consideration. Madam Chair. Senator Thum. Um, I just, the uh, Senator from Missouri makes a good point. Um, this is it's relevant to the underlying bill. 
uh, and I am a co-sponsor of the underlying bill, I think it helps passage of the underlying bill, and it does address an issue which is of concern to members on both sides of the aisle. And I appreciate what you're saying about getting them a vote here in the committee. My experience, however, has been that committing to votes on the floor sometimes aren't the most reliable because that's not something that you or I or anybody on this committee uh, controls. And we just haven't had, as he points out, votes on the floor on amendments, period, for, for a long time. Every bill that hits the floor these days, the amendment tree's been filled. So I don't think that's probably a realistic option for him. Um, but, you know, we have a bunch of bills in front of us today. We have two, three weeks in September, uh, a handful of days that we're actually going to be in session, and uh, a vehicle that's moving now, which fixes a problem, needs to be fixed, and doesn't, in my view, in any way affect the underlying discussion we need to have on Spectrum Pipeline. I am very much, as you know, um, we have a bill on Spectrum Pipeline, but I do think this gets at a subject that is very important, uh, particularly to areas of the country where um, rip and replace is, has not been effectively accomplished, a goal that we all share. So uh, I, I think the uh, Senator from Missouri uh, raises a point, and um, I, think he, uh, I think he would win on his amendment, and I think the bill would pass um, overwhelmingly. Further discussion? Madam Chair, I ask for a roll call vote. I just, uh, Madam Chair? Senator Tester. I don't know what the hell we're voting on. Yeah, I don't know I what know. the amendment does. I don't know how it's paid for. Sure. Rip and replace Huawei is great, but if we're talking about spelling, selling spectrum, potentially military spectrum, to do this, even though I support Huawei, that's a huge problem. Well, if, so, um, yeah, if the gentleman would yield. Um, Senator, Senator Wicker. I, I do believe it, it would uh, require an appropriation. Um, this authorizes uh, an, uh, an amount for a rip and replace, but it, does, it doesn't appropriate the money, and so that would be a decision to be made later. Now, let me just suggest that if, if, um, if the chair believes she, um, um, she has the votes to take this out because um, it should be taken up uh, on another piece of legislation, then let's just proceed to a vote and see where the chips fall. Um, but uh, the, the matter is before us, and I think the senator deserves a vote, and I, I, will, I will vote in favor of it. But it I, would be subject Madam to appropriation. Chair. Senator Duckworth. What is the authorized amount? I, I don't have a copy of this in front of me. I don't know what the context is. You're asking me to vote on something I've never seen. Yeah, it, it, it's been submitted. Um, it's at the, and I'll happy to go through it. Um, this committee, this Congress, has felt as a matter of national security to rip out and replace um, Huawei assets. Um, Congress appropriated over $1.2 billion to do that. That is not enough. The additional $3 billion to do it would come from non military but AWS-3 Spectrum. And so, this would, so this would allow us to actually finish the job. It doesn't, it doesn't go uh, into a big, broad policy discussion about Spectrum. I, 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 I joined Senator Tester in opposing Huawei, but I would like to see a copy of this. May I get a, a can you sure. print this out for me to look at? Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Senator Welch. Uh, th uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. We haven't seen the text. But number two, uh, there are many of us on both sides of the aisle uh, who not only share Senator uh, Schmidt's concern, but also are extremely uh, concerned about the continuation of the ACP program. Uh, that really affects affordability for about 23 million Americans. And those are in all of our states, and that's why I think there's really been solid bipartisan support. And uh, it affects 4 million veterans. Uh, and I spoke to uh, our VA director, uh, Dennis uh, McDonough, yesterday, and uh, extremely concerned uh, about 
uh, how this is gonna adversely affect our uh, veterans. Uh, so we got a tangle here uh, because those of us who uh, support the ACP include a lot of folks who rip, uh, support uh, rip and replace. Senator Wicker's been a leader on that uh, and share uh, the Senator Schmidt's concern, but we're not gonna get one without the other. And how do we resolve that? Uh, we're still working on it, uh, essentially to try to get a pay for. Mm -hmm. But I will, as the, the chair indicated, want to propose the bill that uh, I had co-sponsored uh, that would provide $7 billion uh, that would then pay for a continuation of the Affordable Connectivity Program and rip and replace. Uh, so I will. I would uh, just want to put the committee on alert that uh, uh, I would be offering that as an amendment as part of uh, this overall discussion. And I yield back. So a, a, a quick clarification that the Schmidt Amendment was timely filed. I've got my staff making Xerox copies of it to, to give a written copy to everyone. It should be it should be available momentarily, but it was timely filed. So your staff should have it already, but you will get you will get another copy copy momentarily. It was, Madam Chair. I don't think it was. Just, just to clarify, just, my, one, my, go Senator ahead. Welch. I'm sorry. Said, yeah. I, I don't know that it, the amendment was timely filed, and we weren't expecting to call up Senator Wicker's bill for this very reason because a lot of things had not been worked out, and so as we're dealing with this, we have ten or eleven other bills that I'd like to get to, and. And, and so I would like to get to the rest of those bills, but if we can't get to them because we're going to sit here and argue now about spectrum this afternoon, we can, we can do that. I don't know what everybody's schedules are and the length of time that it will take to do that. But yes, people will have the right to offer the ACP amendment. So that is part of this um, broader discussion. Madam Chair? Yes, Senator Lujan. Madam Chair, thank you very much. I, I, I also want to join in the conversation that Senator Welch um, just reminded us of. Um, another bipartisan accomplishment in the infrastructure package was understanding that constituents in every one of our states um, did not have access to high-speed, affordable internet. Uh, 90 million people that just couldn't afford it. And we learned during COVID the importance of this powerful program to ensure families could connect. Um, it was supported in a bipartisan way. I want to commend Senator Welch and Senator Vance, who first came up with an appropriation bill to be able to provide funding for this program so that it would not end. Number two, I was proud to work with Senator Vance to develop a piece of legislation to provide short-term funding for ACP for the rem remainder of this year, until which time this committee and the Congress would pass spectrum reauthorization legislation to include funding for ACP, rip and replace, all these critical programs for those of us that especially live in the most rural parts of America where our constituents don't have that connectivity where we could work on it together. Um, the very nature that um, I'm talking about the vice presidential running mate of the previous president and these pieces of legislation show how we work together. There's some colleagues that disagree as well, but I'm certainly hopeful that there is the ability that if this is going to move forward, that what Senator Welch will be offering to us as well to support ACP would be included in that same bipartisan spirit of us working together to ensure these programs get put in place. I yield back. Madam Chair. Senator Schmidt. I would just point out that Congress mandated rip and replace. So this is fulfilling the obligation. The ACP, which I'm perfectly, and I'm sure others are perfectly willing to have that negotiation as relates to the spectrum bill, haven't been afforded that opportunity. It's not mandated. But we should, we, I'm all in favor of working this stuff out. But in order to do that, you actually have to present ideas and have votes on them. And that's all, we're, that's all I'm saying is that Congress mandated rip and replace. This is an easy way to pay for it. Uh, and it has broad bipartisan support on a bill that's relevant, that's moving. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Senator Schatz. Uh, just for the benefit of all the members, I just have a parliamentary inquiry. If the 
Schmidt Amendment was not timely filed. Do we need unanimous consent in order to consider it? It's modified. Mm -hmm. We need agreement on the ranking member and the chair. You have to have agreement by the chair and ranking member. Well, good news is it was filed days ago. Not the modified, <laughs> not the modified version. This is an approved variant. So, this is uh, Is it possible as it, uh, we move through these other things that we at least get these 15 bills done? That we put this in abeyance for a minute? And get I would 15 object to bills that. Done? Okay, that we've been all waiting for for like a year? That are all bipartisan that we could do together? So, I don't care. I don't care. Yes, if that's what you want. Okay, we we I think we might have a path forward. Okay. Could everyone just so we can move the chair is speaking. So we we will proceed to a vote on a Schmidt amendment. I think my colleague Senator Welch wants to offer a ACP. Uh, amendment. Just for the record, the Schmidt amendment wasn't timely filed, but I am. But, but you're Nothing ready. changed. Nothing changed to the top line about cru what the cruise modified was. Nothing changed. I, I think the chair is about to rule in your favor. No, 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 no. I want to make clear. Like, I, that's fine. No, no, I'm just saying uh, we filed this days ago, so I don't want to, like we're, spur like we're pushing this on to people at the last minute. That's not true. It's just, no. Okay. Madam, Madam Chair, can I just? Yes, Senator, Senator Tester. So uh, I think there's broad support for rip and replace on Huawei. Um, Senator Fisher, would you yield for a question? I will. Senator Fisher, uh, is AWS-3 the military bans that we've been debating about for the last six, eight months? No, not in, um, not in uh, the amendment that Senator Schmidt has. But it refers to in sec the section the bi the bill I have, and I, I just says it says this. It says not later than one year after the date of enactment of this act, the Federal Communications Commission shall initiate a system of competitive bidding, under Section 309J of the Communications Act of 1934, to grant licenses for Spectrum in the inventory of the Commission with the bands of frequencies referred to by the committee as AWS3 bands, without regard to whether the authority of the commission under paragraph 11 of that section has expired, that tells me that we're gonna sell off Spectrum in AWS 3. And unless I'm assured that that is absolutely 100% not part of the military ban that's been under negotiation for the last six, eight months, no matter how I feel about rip and replace, I'm not gonna put national security at risk. Senator Tester and I agree with you on our very strong stand that you and I have when it comes to uh, selling off spectrum that our Department of Defense needs to keep this country safe. As we are reading Senator Schmidt's amendment, it's the AWS three bands, which, which applies to what were the DISH van, uh, bands that they um, now have to return that has been decided and that's what uh, this amendment refers to. Let's vote. Senator, Madam Senator Chairman. Thune. Senator Lummis. Uh, Madam Chairman, I strongly encourage us to consider uh, the Schmid uh, amendment. Um, I, three states are heavily impacted by this. Uh, the, Nebraska, Wyoming, and Colorado significantly so. There's an entire strip of Interstate 80 that will lose service if these small rural companies that have significant investments in um, the technology that has been 
deemed a security risk because it was made in China. And not enough money was allocated to replace the rip and replace program. And so consequently, we've got areas all over the country that are at a national security risk specifically because they still have the Chinese technology embedded in their systems that the federal government decided needed to be replaced. So this is in protection of nat national security. Furthermore, if you've ever driven on Interstate 80 through Nebraska and Wyoming and then down on I-70 in Colorado, in the winter, you know that you can hit spot blizzards, cars go over, trucks go over. And if there's no broadband, there's no access to use your cell phone, uh, this is getting dangerous. And these companies are at the end of their rope now. I, we need to do this, and I strongly support um, the the Schmidt Amendment. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Madam Chair, I'm sorry to beat a dead horse. So are we saying that the dish bans, no part of the AWS3 is being claimed by the DOD at all for nationals? As, that, as that is correct. That, okay, thank you. That's correct. So I, I suggest that we move forward on both of these proposed amendments by Senator Welch and Senator, um, uh, oh. Senator Schmidt and, um, and the final passage. So, okay. So all those in favor of Senator uh, Schmidt say aye. 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 All those opposed? The amendment is agreed to. Senator Welch? Um, I propose amendment labeled Kentwell 1, uh, which would provide $7 billion uh, to, for the continuation of the affordable connectivity program. And uh, all of us understand the importance of that program and how it benefits uh, folks in every single one of our states, uh, including the, the 4 million veterans who, without the affordability that is provided by this amendment, uh, will continue to be without broadband. I yield back. It's not offset. Uh, is this seven billion dollars not offset? Pardon me. Well, I, I see that on um, section yes. yeah. capital B fiscal year twenty twenty four seven billion dollars to remain available until expended. Um, where is there an offset? Not in this bill. All right, th I thank the gentleman for yielding. I, I, I really, um, I, I think we're gonna have to. It, it, Senator, this look, would be. Uh, look elsewhere to solve this problem. Well, let me, let me explain, and this gets to the heart of the problem that I think the chair was raising about doing it in this fashion. This gets attached to the AWS of Senator Schmidt's amendment, then there is going to be revenue generated from that. And what those of us who are uh, saying is our major priority is ACP, we obviously want that pay for, and that is one that those who think rip and replace should be the top priority want to use that, that same revenue as a pay for. Bottom line here is we've been struggling together uh, to find a way to accommodate uh, the ACP, or pardon me, the the, uh, the, uh, the rip and replace needs, and also Senator Lummis, I mean, that's a really serious situation, obviously, for the folks you represent. And we don't want to throw overboard all those folks who need the ACP. So what this amendment would do is essentially ride on the revenues uh, that rip and replace would uh, be using in Senator Schmidt's amendment, and we uh, would have a shared uh, use of the revenue from the sale of that spectrum. Offset. Senator Cruz. 
So, Madam Chair, I've, I've said a number of times that I'm happy to work with members uh, across the aisle on ACP and to consider extending ACP if they're serious reforms. I would note this bill has no reforms in it at all. And as Senator Wicker observed, it is not paid for or offset in any way. Uh, so I would recommend a no, and, and Madam Chair, I would ask for a roll call vote. Clerk will call the roll. Ma Madam Chair, just a parliamentary inquiry. I, I'm, I have an amendment in front of me that says Luhan 1 to Cruz 3. I'm not sure, I'm not sure uh, Senator Welch's uh, amendment is properly before us. This is all right. Well. Clerk will call the roll. Aye, Ms. Kobachar. Mr. Schatz. Aye. Mr. Markey. Aye, by proxy. Mr. Peters. Aye, by proxy. Ms. Baldwin. Aye. Ms. Duckworth. Mr. Tester. Ms. Cinema. I by proxy. I by proxy. Ms. Rosen. I by proxy. Mr. Lujan. Aye. Mr. Hickenlooper. I by proxy. Mr. Warnock. Aye. Mr. Welch. Aye. Mr. Cruz. No. Mr. Thune. No. Mr. Wicker. No. Mrs. Fisher. Mr. Moran. No. Mr. Sullivan. No by proxy. Mrs. Blackburn. No by proxy. Mr. Young. Mr. Budd. No by proxy. Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Vance. Mrs. Capito. Ms. Lummis. Ms. Cantwell. Aye. The yeses are 14, the noes are 12. The motion is agreed to. Now we are, what is the number, please? I know, we're, the, the motion is on Senator Wicker's original bill. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the amendment, the motion is agreed to. Now we got the big question. Now 10. Senator Cruz. Madam Chair. All right, I'm gonna have to take a deep breath for this one, sorry. I move that S-275, the Rural Broadband Protection Act of 2023, as amended by the Capito Substitute. S-690, the Network Equipment Transparency Act, as amended by the Hickenlooper Substitute. S-1570, the Bottles and Breastfeeding Equipment Screening Enhancement Act. S-1956, the Invest Here, Make Here Act of 2023, as amended by the Baldwin Substitute, as modified. S-2086, the Sea Turtle Rescue Assistance Act of 2023, as amended by the Markey Substitute. S-2233, the Youth Poisoning Protection Act, as amended by the Duckworth Substitute. S-2498, the Hotel Fees Transparency Act of 2023, as amended by the Klobuchar Moran Substitute. S-2645, the Preventing Heat Illness, Illnesses and Death Act, of 2023, as amended by the Markey substitute, as modified, Cruise 2, Cruise 3, Cruise 4, as modified, Shots 1 and Sullivan 1, S3162, the Test AI Act of 2023, as amended by the Luhan Thune substitute, and Cruise 4, as modified, S2377, the Marine Debris Program Reauthorization, S-3475, the Strengthening the Commercial Driver's License Information System Act. S-3606, the National Earthquake Hazards Reduction Program Reauthorization Act of 2024, as amended by the Tester Substitute. S-3788, the National Landslide Preparedness Act Reauthorization Act of 2024, as amended by the Cantwell Substitute. S-3849, the Promoting U.S. Leadership and Standards Act of 2024, as amended by the Blackburn Substitute, as modified. 
S3879, the Illegal Red Snapper Enforcement Act, as amended by the Cruz Substitute, Cantwell 1, and Schatz 3, as modified. S3943, the Accelerating Networking Cybersecurity and Hardware for Oceanic Research, Anchor. S3959, the Transportation Security Screening Modernization Act, as amended by the Wicker Tester Substitute, as modified. S4107, the Think Differently Transportation Act, as amended by the Duckworth Capito Substitute. S4212, Music Tourism, as amended by the Blackburn Substitute. S4343, Fire Ready Nation, as amended by the Cantwell Substitute. Shots two is modified, shots three is modified, and shots four is modified. S4487, the Small Business AI Training Act, as amended by the Cantwell Moran Substitute and Cruise three is modified. S4569, the Take It Down Act, as amended by the Cruise Substitute. S4596, the Artificial Intelligence Public Awareness and Education Campaign Act, and S4579, the Northwest Straits Marine Conservation Initiative Act, as amended by Sullivan 1 and Cruz 1, all be reported favorably. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. One more motion. The bills. No. Madam Chair. The motion is agreed to. Senator Cruz. Madam Chair, I move that PN1580, the nomination of Chad M. Carey of Alaska to be Director of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Commission Officer Corps and Office of Marine and Aviation Operations, PN440-2, PN1803, PN1804, PN1116-2, PN1900, PN1901, Coast Guard promotions be favorably reported. All those, is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. The motion, the ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. The nominations are ordered to be reported favorably. I ask that uh, staff have the authority to make any technical and conforming amendments. Um, I know that uh, members. Uh, we have a vote on the floor, but members may want to speak to any of the legislation that we Madam have Chair. passed today. Yes, Senator Capito. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, the ranking member, uh, particularly for S-275, the Rural Broadband Protection Act. This is about accountability for all the dollars that are flowing into rural America to get to that last home, that last place. And we want to have the vetting of the internet service providers, whether they can actually deliver this uh, to, uh, to the rural America uh, in a timely fashion, and that we don't run into a situation where they're turning money back four and five years later because they actually underbid or they can't do the service. So I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Senator Baldwin. Thank you. I want to thank the chair and ranking member for working with uh, Senator Vance and myself uh, to advance our Invent Here, Make It Here Act. To me, this is pretty simple. If American taxpayers are funding the research that leads to a breakthrough invention, American manufacturers and workers should be making those projects, products. Sadly, we've seen some in, uh, instances of taxpayer-funded uh, cutting-edge innovations getting shipped abroad, only to have foreign, sometimes adversarial countries manufacture and use the technology we all paid for. For instance, there was a high-profile case of government-funded research that helped develop breakthrough battery technology. But instead of those batteries becoming a great American success story, uh, a Chinese company was able to buy the technology and is now manufacturing them in China. Today, uh, by passing the uh, Invent Here, Make It Here Act, We've taken a, an important step showing the bipartisan support for this bill, standing with American manufacturers, and I thank my colleagues for your support. Um, Senator Golpachar. Yes, I just want to thank you. Among the many bills we passed today, the Hotel Fees Transparency Act uh, that Senator Moran, Senator Capito, and I uh, put together, it's already passed the House. Um, and this is a really good bill uh, to guarantee that the price you see is the price you pay 
for hotels and other accommodations uh, would require anyone advertising a hotel room or short-term rental to clearly show the true cost of a booking up front. This is positive, bipartisan development. Thank you. Senator Cruz. Uh, Madam Chair, quickly, before we adjourn, I'd like to note, uh, although I agreed to allow several bills today to go by voice vote today in the interest of moving forward, many of them still need considerable work. And I commit to work with you and other members of the committee. I think we will be able to get there on some of the bills, others perhaps not. Uh, but, but I will not support a number of them on the floor until that work is done. Thank you. Well, I want to thank all of the members for their attendance today and participation in a major, major markup to move policy forward on many fronts, but specifically on artificial intelligence. It represents a great deal of work by many, many of our colleagues over the last year. I want to thank our staffs, too. I don't think people realize how hard they work to try to uh, get these legislative proposals in a bipartisan fashion. And uh, I will enter into the record a longer statement about all of the other bills that we have passed today and give recognition to our colleagues who worked so successfully on those. And uh, again, with that, we're adjourned.